And for that, we have Zach from A Portable. For those who are not familiar with A Portable, it's a platform uh, built that helps you use your built-in Objective-C and basically portray that into any other uh, platform. So thank you so much, Zach, and welcome on stage. Thank you. <laughs> thank you much, that. All right, so design choices that impact cross-platform feasibility. A lot of words. Uh, <laughs> to give you kind of a start about me a little bit, um, so I work at a company called The Portable. Um, we've been a little bit of a secret behind a lot of the big studios um, for helping them go from iOS to Android. So we deal with cross-platform issues every day. We see everything. There hasn't probably been a big issue. We do more than just Objective-C. We also do C++. Um, we have a way of making Android C++ run faster and, and be less error-prone most of the time, um, mostly because we have direct or built-in Xcode support. And we're also um, we're the financial backers behind the Cocos 2D project. So uh, all the um, Cocos 2D developers, um, the Cocos 2D iPhone developers, we, we support that project. And uh, uh, one of the things that we've done as part of that is to bring them all under one roof. And we now ship this commercial product. It's still open source, but it's commercial because we offer support for it called Sprite Builder that uh, we just launched in the Mac App Store and it's doing pretty well. So that's enough about um, our company and what we do, just kind of establishing that I am an expert at these things. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the first thing is, what is cross-platform? Um, well, you can think of it as mobile to mobile, uh, iOS to Android or iOS to mo Windows Mobile, or whatever. You could also say mobile to web, and that could be your Flash and whatever games. Uh, PC to mobile, we get this a lot, Kingdom Rush, those kind of guys, they, they go from from one platform to, um, to mobile and, and then have to adapt their game to kind of fit the constraints of that new platform. And then also console to PC, this happens more traditionally, this is your old school kind of cross-platform concepts, but um, they're all important when it comes to how you look at how you're going to consider doing your port. Um, and so one of the first things that you really need to worry about is how is this game going to fit and change for each one of the new platforms you come across. You've got touch, you've got mouse, you've got joysticks, you have everything. The user expectations are gonna be different between each one of them. You're gonna have different screen sizes and you're gonna have to adapt to each one of those. So that's the first question you should really be asking. The other one is, uh, is there gonna be any cross-platform interaction? Are you gonna do, um, Within one space, of course, um, you could have multiplayer, like your PS4 players, and you can have multiplayer between your iPhone users, but are you going to do iPhone versus Android? Are you going to do PC versus iPhone? Um, these are some of the things that make sense. Uh, when you get into that, there can be some problems, like uh, you don't want to put um, a first-person shooter against um, a console in a PC game. That's generally a bad idea. But Facebook integration can drive revenue. So um, that's one of the questions you should be asking. And, and then really, what is the right technology? And that's the other one. And then it comes down to, when should I actually really worry about this? This is something that a lot of indies really spend a lot of time worrying about when really they should be shipping. And so there, there is an important time to really look at this, but then to also evaluate, well, what's coming in the future? And should I really be worrying about today, or should I just build, be building the best game possible now? So um, UX and design, this is probably the most important thing. Um, different platforms have different requirements and expectations, and that's a given. Uh, and users have different tastes and biases on each platform, and will engage completely different. And I mean in even the slightest ways. A tablet user is going to use it differently than an iPhone user. Um, a Android user is going to be completely different from an iPhone user in a lot of cases. And um, I'll show some examples of some metrics um, in a second, but this is generally um, something that comes up. And this is kind of a, just a funny comic that I found that was uh, how different iOS and Android users kind of picture each other that I thought was relevant. Uh, so cross-play, this is one of the big topics. Um, it's important to decide if you're going to have any interactions between each one of your games on each one of your platforms. Um, and then, like I was saying before, interaction can be good and bad. Uh, so in the case of like uh, Jelly Splash, um, I can uh, beat somebody's high score, it sends a Facebook notification, and then they can play the Facebook Flash version to beat my score. And that kind of interaction works for that game, but that might not work for others. So say in the case of Bejeweled. Bejeweled's one of those cases where I can tap and move faster with my finger than I can on uh, the, with the mouse version. And does it make sense to 
like in the second question, um, share leaderboards, achievements, and unlocks between all three of these platforms. Is my game balanced for this? And this is one of those things that you really have to um, really look at the, your game mechanics to make sure that this makes sense for whatever you're building. Um, Turn-based strategy games usually do okay. Um, Fast-paced clickers don't. Uh, and then what about cross-play capability? And this, this goes into, am I going to do cross-device um, uh, gameplay? So good example, um, Wooga's Diamond Dash. Um, they're one of our customers, just caveat, full disclosure. Um, but they uh, have developed their game differently for every platform they come across. So on smartphones, 56 gems, tablets, 72, and then big tablets, 90. And then they follow the tablet strategy mostly when it comes to um, the web-based version. So, but then they also go deeper. They get much deeper. They look at the statistics of how well people are getting through the games. Um, are they getting frustrated and walking away? And what they found is that every single platform, people engaged with it a little bit differently. And so they had to modify and customize for every one of their platforms. You can't just slap a PC game onto a mobile phone and hope it's going to be successful. You really have to look at the metrics and data within your own app, do appropriate testing, and find out where this works. Another great example, um, EA's Battlefield 4 Commander. Uh, this is one of the great ones of how you can approach doing cross-play in a way that makes sense between tablets and PCs and consoles and everything. So, rather than sticking a first-person shooter onto a tablet, which is generally a horrible idea, those little joysticks are horrible to deal with on a first-person shooter with a tablet because you want to focus on what works for touch. What they did is they said, well, okay, we want a tablet. We want something for the mobile market that people can engage with the games that are going on with all the people's clans and everything. So they built commander mode. So you can grab a tablet, interact with a game that exists. This is a great cross-play capability and you still keep your IP. This is still a different game, but it is still, um, it kind of isn't. <laughs> it is the same game, but it's not. Um, and this is a great example of how crossplay can work really well. And so on top of that, oh, okay. Um, you really want to create your own experience. And this kind of gets into the details. You don't have to use stock components provided by the operating system. You, can, you don't need to use the, uh, the uh, like the list views, navigation controllers, things that come with it, you can design your own in whatever toolkit that you want because you're game developers, you're forgiven for not using the system stuff that a normal app would get you rejected for. Um, you can have your own UX and bring your own experience. It's great. You really can encompass the user in your own experience and that does give you the side benefit of not having to deal with every cross-platform-ism of each one of the platforms. So. Uh, like I was saying, these de designs work great across each platform and um, game developers get a break. But the biggest thing is don't violate user expectations. So you might have different UX between platforms, but on an Android device, you have a back button. And if you don't do something with that back button, your users are gonna be upset and you probably won't get featured. Google doesn't really feature games that don't support the back button. So you, want, you, you can cheat, you can use all your existing method, or your UI and your UX, you can have your custom HUD, but don't violate what the user expects. If the user can hit B to go back, B should go back. All right, so technology, um, this gets into, there's tons of different ways to get to the different platforms, um, and there's no one magic bullet that will do every platform out of the box. There's a lot of people that will sell magic beans, but I'm telling you right now that none of them do everything perfectly for every platform. There's nothing out there. And on top of that, while code reuse is very nice, and if you can, if you can pull that off and find a technology that lets you reuse as much of your code between your platforms, great. But sometimes it really makes sense to actually consider doing a different port for another platform. It doesn't, in some cases, you really have to break it down for whatever you're building, but sometimes it does make sense to hire a Flash developer to do the, the Flash version and to hire an uh, Objective-C or a C++ developer to make the mobile version. Um, you can pull it off with some of the technologies out there, but then you might be sacrificing the uh, abilities that you have with the native platform, and that happens more often than you think. Uh, so technological considerations is the technical um, choice that I'm going for are going to be the most performant. This gets into, if you're building um, with high-level VMs, high-level technologies, um, you can get some frame rate stutters, you can get 
you, you can hit limitations that you wouldn't expect. Um, and that kind of goes with uh, getting vendor lock-in. So you start with a solution that you think is great and then ends up not being as great and then you're stuck with it. So that's one of the things to consider. Um, and then, am I going to be able to find the talent that's going to be able to use this technology? And sometimes it's actually cheaper and faster to have separate technologies for different cross-platform um, variants of your, your game. Um, but in some cases, it, it makes sense that you can double down on one developer. Um, we find that uh, people that double down on mobile and share their resources between mobile teams and then having a separate um, web team and console team makes sense in some cases. There are people, though, that have uh, stats that say for certain 3D games, use Unity, and then you can do most of those. But even with Unity, there's no magic button that will make an Android version work perfectly out of the box on Android. So you're going to spend some time with everything. And then reuse of code is one of the biggest things to consider. You're going to spend far less time if you can reuse the same code over on each platform. But do it where it makes sense. So mobile considerations, um, this is one of the big ones. Uh, there are a lot of cross-platform mobile solutions out there. Um, oh, went too far. Everything from Coco CD with Objective-C, um, Coco CD X with C++. Both of those you can use my company if you want to to get to Android. Yay. Um, small plug. Uh, Unity, you can use C Sharp and JavaScript. They're not really native to any of the platforms, but they are high level enough that you can, um, it's easy for Unity to port those to new platforms. You've got Corona, Monogame, PhoneGap, Accelerator, Adobe Flash. All these solutions do work. I think Adobe Flash is the one that's more on the out because it's harder to do that with mobile. Um, but you can still do it today. The, uh, you really have to evaluate these for their merits, um, what they're going to provide you, and if you can find the talent for each of these. Um, but they do come with their uh, ups and downs. Um, other things to consider. So this, this goes back to bringing your own experience. If you don't bring your own experience, you kind of fit with the methodologies of each platform. And sometimes with casual games, you want to do that. Um, but you do run into issues like this. iOS has navigation bar or view controllers, and they have action sheets for doing um, uh, your, your call to action kind of actions. Uh, Android has the back button and the action bar. Different kind of experience for how you navigate in an application. But if you don't use any of these things, you won't run into any issues. Uh, native scroll views, keyboards, dialogues, they all behave differently. If you can avoid them, you're going to probably not run into so many issues. Uh, tabs are on the bottom on iOS. They're on the top on Android. Or rather, yeah, that's right. Um, and so it's something to consider if you're going to go um, using everything that's built in each one of the platforms. So native, um, this is one that really gets on my nerves. Um, it is the most overloaded term in the cross, or by all plat cross-platform vendors. No one really knows what it means anymore. Um, I think the best thing is I don't think anyone really likes foreigners, so native sounds better, <laughs> and everyone claims they're native. Um, so you hear things like Java is native on Android, and C++ and Objective-C are the native language that compiles the native machine code, and Java isn't because it runs on a VM. And Xamarin, I can build native apps for iPhone and Android and C Sharp. Okay. Uh, <laughs> with PhoneGap, you can have native feeling apps using JavaScript. So this is a marketing buzz term that you should probably, um, if you hear this, don't really evaluate the technology. Nothing is really native like you think it is if they're claiming cross-platform, because if you're cross-platform, you're really not native to anything. And that's the point. Um, so uh, this, this goes into more of the, the technical stuff that comes up coming to Android and from other platforms that I can speak to. Um, if you're using uh, OpenGL, uh, probably best to use PNGs. Um, using proprietary uh, texture compressions for each one of the platforms is going to get you into trouble in a lot of cases. Uh, PVR has, uh, is popular on iOS. It's harder to use for um, Android. And then multiple OpenGL contexts, this will also shoot yourself in the foot. Um, it, certain Android drivers are really bad with OpenGL with multiple contexts. Uh, GSL or DLSL um, implementations are extremely buggy. And on Android, you have many implementations. So um, make sure you test. And then test on every chipset before shipping if you make custom shaders. So that's just um, for your OpenGL people. So this is one thing, fragmentation. Um, I love this graph. It illustrates Android pretty darn well. <laughs> um, big half of this is Samsung, and the rest of it is everything else. Um, 
the entire Android market. And this guy up here is like the S2 um, up in the corner, and then the guys next to is the S3. That's the landscape. And it scares the death out of most people that come to Android. But it's not really that bad. And the best strategy for really, if you're going to be iterating for mobile, um, I find is like, for iOS, this is, this is how I do it. Every six months, I go and buy a brand new iPod Touch, the lowest, cheapest one, and then I never upgrade it. So now I've, I'm covered on iOS. And then for Android, a little harder, but not too bad. Um, the Google Nexus device, best reference device. If you get a Nexus 4, a Nexus 5, a Galaxy Nexus, you'll cover the vast majority of the market. Each one of those has a different chipset for um, OpenGL, and you'll pretty much cover the gamut of variations within the best devices to debug on. The second thing is Samsung devices are popular. That graph, more than half is Samsung. But you really should, yeah, you should really get one because it's like the number one device that exists in the market. But be very careful because when you hear the term S3, S2, S4, I think there's 12 S2s of different hardware variations with all different OpenGL implementations. Um, I think there's five or six different S3s in the market in different countries. So it's a misnomer, so be careful with that. Uh, then get a device that supports Android 2.3. It still has 20% of the market. It's your oldest target, and you should be focused on it. So um, on top of that, that's pretty much what I have. Um, here we go. <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter. My name is Z Bowling. Um, we have a booth over there if you want to talk more about doing Android and native solutions that exist on both platforms. Um, and I guess I'll just open it for questions if anyone has anything on anything cross-platform. Thank you, Zach. Any questions? I have a question about uh, desktop and mobile. Uh, imagine you have a game like uh, Match 3 or something like that. Uh, you can sync uh, its progress on uh, desktop on uh, mobile. You can play it on both uh, platforms. Yep. And uh, like, let's say it's easy to cheat, I don't know, for example, clock on the phone to get additional lives on the desktop. Uh, do we really have to care about it or uh, what to do? Is it any, any comments? So I can say um, a lot of our customers, they handle the situation. Um, they uh, look at it as not creating global leaderboards is one way to curb that behavior. Um, <laughs> so Bejeweled, you have a leaderboard with everybody that's your friend. And so only your friends will notice, hey, he's probably cheating. Um, that's probably the easiest way to work around that kind of issue. Because um, that does happen. Um, I have a Bejeweled bot that we wrote academically for um, Bejeweled and Flash and beats it in two seconds. And then I beat all my friends. And I run it constantly just to annoy them. And <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's, I think, is the best technique for um, curbing bad behavior, at least. Um, but that's something that does come up a lot. Uh, if I may add, uh, uh, but there's difference uh, maybe if it's not the leaderboard, but it's just the saga effect. No, just uh, free lives. Uh, maybe it's uh, then different. So it really kind of depends on your gameplay mechanics um, in this case. Uh, we do a lot of casual games where um, we're not the ones that write the games. Um, we just get to see how hundreds of developers do. Uh, and so I can tell you on popular trends, the vast majority of them don't do anything about it. They don't really care. Um, you'll have bad apples and fine, they exist. Um, but it, if they're really going to go to that effort of cheating at the game, then let them. Um, they're probably not a valuable user, unless you have like IEP or some kind of mechanic where you're losing money on it, then of course, then maybe think about it a little more. But. Any other? You, thanks, you. Uh, you must have a back key in the mobile uh, device. And uh, the, the question is, in PC, you have the keyboard, and in the others, you have the screen. Yep. I think it has to be totally different when you use uh, your, uh, your uh, tablet or your phone. Otherwise, uh, you can't see the game. It's, the screen will be uh, smaller. Uh, so how do the player react to it? And so how do you basically scale up the game for going down to mobile and scale up for everything else? And 
Yeah, you can assume this. Okay. Um, so, trying to think of a really good example. Um, Kingdom Rush, great game. Um, existed a flash game on the desktop for the longest time. Built to scale up depending on what screen resolution that you had. Um, they, for their Android port, what they ended up doing was uh, removing certain HUD elements and certain features using pop-away menus, but using kind of a, um, a responsive design methodology, um, something we borrow from the web. Um, that's a very great methodology for handling multiple screen sizes. So if you use springs and struts, use auto layouts, the things that are provided to you in some of the platforms, that stuff will help. Um, now Android and, and or sorry, tablets and smartphones, sometimes it is better to make a distinction and do a different design between those two. And then going up to desktop, of course, you're going to have touch versus mouse. And then even like focus rings and how you give focus to an element when you're using a joystick or, or how, you, how you drive from there. Th those m variances mean that you can't really, out of the box, find a solution that's going to work for everything. You're going to spend a little time worrying about those little things between each platform. And uh, Hopefully you look at the solutions, maybe Unity is the right one, maybe using Cocos is the right one, maybe redeveloping the game and, and making a pipeline that makes sense, maybe an asset pipeline that can to, to supply um, uh, assets for multiple platforms, it makes sense. But it really depends on what the game is. Um, if I'm making a, a match three game, it's probably a very easy solution to this problem. Um, but if I'm making something that is an intensive tower defense game, it gets a little harder. Any other questions? No? Thank you so cool. much, Zach. All right, thank you.